any rate. So good, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so uh, the title of my presentation is, Does Marijuana Smoking Increase the Risk of Pneumonia? Um, when considering treatment with any therapeutic agent, one must always benefit, one must always benefit, one must always balance benefit against risk. And regarding marijuana, uh, its uh, smoke contains most of the same ingredients found in tobacco smoke, many of which are known to be toxic uh, to lung tissue. Uh, and we know that marijuana, that sm uh, tobacco is the major risk factor by virtue of exposure of the lung to these toxic components within the smoke to chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and lung cancer, uh, both of which uh, account for considerable morbidity and mortality worldwide. So uh, for some time there has been concern that uh, marijuana, because it shares um, the uh, most of the uh, ingredients, the toxic ingredients contained within tobacco smoke, might actually pose similar respiratory risks. However, the weight of evidence thus far uh, does not uh, support a, a significant association between uh, marijuana smoking, even heavy marijuana smoking, and these two respiratory complications of, uh, of tobacco. Uh, on the other hand, there is another tobacco-related respiratory risk, namely community-acquired pneumonia, 25% of the cases of which can be attributed to tobacco smoking. Uh, there are 1.4 million deaths due to pneumonia worldwide. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, uh, there is little information uh, concerning the possibility that marijuana smoking might also predispose to pneumonia. And so that was the objective of uh, a study that we have conducted uh, that I'm going, the results of which I'm going to be presenting today. So I'd like to begin with a brief discussion of the biologic plausibility uh, of there being a risk of marijuana uh, for, for pneumonia. So we performed bronchoscopy on a large number of smokers of marijuana, there were regular, generally heavy smokers of marijuana, alone or with tobacco, tobacco smokers alone and non-smokers. Uh, uh, and we obtained biopsies at various sites uh, in the lower respiratory tract and found that in contrast to the normal bronchomucosa, and here we see uh, the uh, nice, ciliated columnar epithelial cells that line the, the uh, larger airways, these were largely destroyed and replaced by mucus secreting surface epithelial cells, so-called goblet cells, as well as other cells. Uh, and uh, this then results in an increased production of mucus from these cells with the limited capacity of the lung to clear the mucus out of the lung because of the associated ciliary loss, uh, so that this uh, excess accumulated uh, mucus, mucus could serve as a, a culture medium uh, for pathogenic bacteria and predisposed to pneumonia. And as a matter of fact, there are um, observational studies, carefully conducted observational studies that do show an association between increased butin production uh, and, and marijuana use. Now, alveolar macrophages are the primary immune effector cells that reside uh, in the lung, uh, and they serve a very important function to protect the lung against infection when they're stimulated by bacteria or other uh, microbes, uh, then they release uh, toxic uh, products, including reactive oxygen species, uh, nitric oxide, et cetera, that uh, kill uh, the, uh, the bacteria. We uh, wanted to look at the function of alveolar macrophages uh, uh, harvested from the lungs of marijuana smokers. And so we used the technique of bronchoalveolar lavage through the bronchoscope to rinse the 
uh, the, uh, these cells out of the lung so that we could examine their function. And we compared macrophages obtained from marijuana smokers with those obtained from tobacco-only smokers, combined smokers of marijuana, tobacco, and non-smokers. And what we found, these are this is, uh, old studies, but they're, they're still valid, that the uh, macrophages from the marijuana smokers uh, relative to those from tobacco smokers were impaired in their ability to release a reactive oxygen species uh, when uh, stimulated. They were also impaired in their ability to produce pro-inflammatory cytokines, you the TNF-alpha, IL-6, GMCSF, that play a very important role in uh, upregulating uh, inducible nitric oxide synthase, which is the enzyme that converts arginine to nitric oxide. And as I mentioned before, nitric oxide is one of the effector molecules that are important in uh, killing uh, bacteria. So we cultured the macrophages obtained from the marijuana smokers with uh, pathogenic bacterium staph aureus. We also did similar studies with fungi. And, uh, and then uh, looked at the, uh, uh, waited a while, and looked at the ability of these macrophages to kill the bacteria uh, on the, the upper curve here uh, represents the curve from the macrophages that came from marijuana smokers. This is bacteria remaining, so the shallower the curve, the less the killing. So we have an, see an impaired ability of macrophages from marijuana smokers to kill bacteria compared to macrophages from non-smokers and also from tobacco smokers. Uh, and this is a little complex slide, so uh, I'll go through it a little more slowly. Uh, the white circles represent nitric, uh, represent uh, bacterial killing, and the white bars uh, represent nitric oxide production. Ignore the black uh, uh, circles and bars. Uh, and we, hear, we see again that the um, uh, bacterial killing by the macrophages and the marijuana smokers is impaired in parallel with an impairment in nitric oxide production. When we uh, added a, a cytokine, GMCSF, exogenously, we restored nitric oxide production and at the same time restored uh, the bacterial killing capacity of these macrophages. So what is the clinical evidence that marijuana use might be a risk factor predisposing to pneumonia? Uh, there are older uh, case series of fungal pneumonia in marijuana smokers immunocompromised by AIDS and other uh, conditions. We know that HIV positive individuals are particularly high risk for developing uh, pneumonia, including opportunistic infections such as Lumocystis carinii pneumonia. And there are a few uh, older epidemiological studies that showed a significant association between marijuana smoking, these were studies included HIV positive individuals, and, uh, and pneumonia, although conflicting findings have been reported. So it was our objective to re-examine uh, the question whether marijuana smoking does or does not increase the risk for pneumonia. And we use data from the Modi Center AIDS cohort study, which is an ongoing prospective observational study uh, of gay men uh, regarding the natural history of HIV infection. So the study was initiated in 1983, as I mentioned, it's still ongoing. Uh, we uh, analyzed data from uh, subjects who were either uh, persistently HIV negative or HIV positive. Uh, we excluded those uh, who converted because we of possible uh, uh, confounding by seroconversion. And uh, the uh, subjects uh, returned to the clinic every six months. And it was at these visits uh, that we then determined whether or not, the, by self-report, whether or not the patients had had experienced pneumonia in the interval and divided the pneumonias into community-acquired pneumonia and pneumocystis carinii pneumonia, the most uh, common opportunistic pneumonia in, in HIV-positive individuals. And in most cases, the pneumonia was confirmed by chest X-ray. Uh, we uh, censored uh, the data at if, whenever pneumonia was first diagnosed, when AIDS uh, was uh, developed. Uh, and uh, uh, and when the subjects reached the end of the uh, 
the, the study, which was the end of the uh, 2013. Uh, so, um, at these six monthly visits, uh, we also uh, obtained a lot of information about uh, marijuana use during the interval since the, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, well, first of all, about pneumonia, but also during the interval uh, prior, the six month interval prior to the development of pneumonia, as well as at, at, at uh, baseline. Uh, information on marijuana, on um, exposure to other risk factors, including tobacco, potential risk factors, alcohol, other recreational uh, drugs. And um, we also looked at dose response relationships, obtained information on how often the marijuana was used uh, over the previous six months, and actually from the beginning of the study as well. Uh, and we performed uh, Cox proportional hazards uh, to estimate the risk for pneumonia, uh, either uh, community-acquired pneumonia or PCP uh, by marijuana use and adjusted for the covariance shown in this slide, age, race, ethnicity, socioeconomic status, uh, uh, the prophylaxis against pneumocystis pneumonia, sulfamethoxazole, thiomethoxazole, and uh, that's, that's um, I think I have the beginning is Alzheimer's, <laughs> ba Bactrim <laughs> or Septra. Uh, so, um, uh, pneumo and of course, Pneumovax, and pneumo uh, vaccination against pneumococcal pneumonia, uh, and um, adjusted also for tobacco smoking, of course, use of other illicit substances, uh, e either by smoking or by uh, injection, antiretroviral therapy, and in those who were CD, uh, who were HIV positive, viral load, uh, CD4 count, and hepatitis C infection. And these were the results. So in the multivariate analysis, in the uh, persistently HIV negative group, uh, there was no association between uh, marijuana use and uh, the development of, uh, of pneumonia, community-acquired pneumonia, uh, and the positive control was tobacco, and there we do see a significant effect of tobacco on uh, pneumonia uh, risk. Uh, for the HIV positive group, uh, uh, again, uh, marijuana smoking was not associated with an increased risk for pneumonia, uh, whereas tobacco was, and uh, of course a low CD4 count uh, was as well. Uh, and in, uh, with regard to the risk of pneumocystis carinii pneumonia in the HIV positive group, again, marijuana smoking was not associated with any increased risk of pneumonia, CD4 counts were. Uh, I, paradoxically, tobacco in this analysis was not, we cannot explain this, this uh, the finding. There may be some residual confounding that we couldn't adjust for, we're not sure. Uh, when we looked at dose-response relationships, uh, we failed to find any association between marijuana and the risk of pneumonia, whether or not the, uh, irrespective of how frequently the, pneumo the, pneumo the marijuana was used, monthly, weekly, or daily, in either the HIV negative or HIV positive pop populations for either community-acquired pneumonia or for PCP pneumonia. So in summary, uh, regular marijuana smoking does increase the risk of chronic bronchitis. Uh, it does impair bacterial and fungal killing by alveolar macrophages obtained from uh, marijuana smokers, but it does not appear to increase the risk of pneumonia even in individuals immunosuppressed due to HIV infection. And I, these are, I'd like to acknowledge, actually Josh Quint uh, received his PhD recently in epidemiology from UCLA. Roger Deedles uh, is an epidemiologist, used to be the dean of the School of Public Health at UCLA, and we, we are grateful to the Max Executive Committee for releasing uh, the, uh, the data for us to analyze, although it was a rather painful process. It took two years to get a hold of the, of the data. And I, am, I finished on time. Thank you. I'd be happy to answer any questions if I could possibly see you with the. Over here, on on your left, 
Donald. Okay. Yeah, over here on your left. On my left? No, straight ahead. Straight ahead. Oh, there okay. We go. okay. Yeah, Ethan Russo here. Okay, uh, thank you. A very elegant presentation as usual. Um, Donald, I wondered whether you examined any patients doing vaporization in your cohort. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. Obviously, if you vaporize uh, the, uh, um, the THC, Three minutes. Uh, you're, you're not going to expose the lungs to a lot of the particulate material that is within, within the smoke. Uh, my guess is if you studied uh, uh, individuals who vaporized uh, THC, you pro might find that there was no uh, uh, no association with chronic bronchitis, which probably has to do with exposure to the mostly the particulates and possibly some of the to uh, the uh, toxic uh, volatile material within the smoke as well. No, we did we did not study uh, vapors. Nonetheless, very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Yes. So I was interested in the nitric oxide evidence that you have for, you know, correlations with, um, I guess, the macrophage processes. Mm -hmm. um, so do you see that there's any correlation between the cannabinoids signaling off of the macrophages and suppressing nitric oxide synthase uh, activation? Um, so it's not necessarily that nitric oxide is not being able to be expressed, it's that you have cannabinoids interacting with um, your macrophage production, since there's some correlation between those two. Uh, yes, I think, so um, uh, CB2 receptors probably exist on uh, macrophages, uh, alveolar macrophages that haven't yet been identified on, but they most likely do, and so the binding to, of THC to those receptors uh, then essentially deactivates the macrophages, impairs their ability to produce pro-inflammatory cytokines. It's the cytokines that are needed to upregulate inducible nitric oxide synthase that then leads to the conversion of arginine within the cell mm -hmm. uh, into nitric oxide, which is then released. Thank you. One minute. Okay. I don't see any other hands, but thank you very much.